Welcome to Organize with professional organizer Rachel Seavey. Every Sunday at 6 p.m., Rachel shares her expertise and compassionate approach to help you deal with overwhelming clutter. Rachel? Hey, collectors! Welcome to the Organize podcast. I'm your host, professional organizer Rachel Seavey, and this is the first of three in the AMA Ask Me Anything series. I'm so happy to just get it out and get it done. Now, I get asked this question a lot, and the question is, what got me into this line of business, or why am I a professional organizer, or why do I like working with people that hoard? So, originally, I'd say for the first, you know, three or four years of my business, I answered, you know, oh, well, I've always been naturally organized, and I've always, you know, been tidy and kept things in a right place. And that just felt like a right fit at that time in my life. But a family friend had to point out to me that there is a much deeper reason. So I'll break it down to you. I, I hadn't seen this family friend in a while. And I was at my sister's baby shower. And this gal came up to me, and she's so sweet, and she's very professional, and she's always been successful. And she just expressed how happy that she was that I had found a, prof a profession that I had loved. And then she told me she thought it was great because it was like helping my mother. Whoa, Nellie. Helping my mother? I wanted to ask her so many more questions, like what, what did she even mean by that? But it really was not the time or the place. We were just getting started with the baby shower games, and I didn't want to take anything away from my sister or make a big deal, but she had really, really sparked my interest. And before I knew it, you know, she was gone. And um, so the next day, I emailed her. And I asked her what she meant by that. And she called me up laughing. And she said, Rachel, don't you remember that your mom had all of that clutter? Wow. Okay. So for some reason, probably a good one, I had blocked out the part of my childhood that was cluttered. The more I strained to recall my house as a child, the more clutter appeared. Flat surfaces were covered with miscellaneous items, piles of laundry. Now, if you've listened to my episodes before, you might know that I grew up with a mentally ill and unstable mother. Her ups and downs, she were high and low, and she eventually ended up abandoning me. So I have a lot that I've actually blocked out about my childhood and blocked out about her. It's kind of a delicate subject. I've gone through a lot of therapy with it. I've, I've worked with it a lot, but, you know, I just thought it was very interesting. Maybe subconsciously I remember the clutter and, and this is why I'm doing this. But honestly, I was really shocked when my family friend said that and she knew my mom well and I also verified with other family friends, and they, and too, uh, in fact, confirmed that, yes, there was a lot of clutter in the house. So it's just fascinating to me that I would block something so important out. So I started to remember my garage, and oh my gosh, it was so cluttered. Like, you couldn't even navigate through it. It was scary. And we had this big walk-in closet, and it was just, like, full to the bridges. It's, oh, my gosh. So how did I forget all of this? How did I forget all of those boxes and all of that crap that got dragged around with us every single time that she had been moved, which was frequently? So this, this revelation is still fascinating to me. Um, I'm about a year into it. Uh, it. It did really help me remember a lot about my childhood that I had blocked out. 
Not only was my house really cluttered, it was pretty dirty as well. I mean, I I can't remember being taught to clean. I don't remember being told to shower. I was never told to brush my teeth. Living with someone that's an incredibly narcissistic, I, I felt like, you know, wow, I, I didn't even get taught good hygiene as a child. And like, no wonder I'm such a big preacher to everybody about this kind of stuff. So this is hard for me to share. But you know, when I talk to you guys, it's actually super, super therapeutic for me. So thank you. But in the third grade, kids made fun of me because I smelled bad. And that was a hard memory. I was like, oh, I remember that. My little feelings were really hurt, and I had no idea. Now, both of my parents at the time had smoked, and so maybe some of it was the cigarette smell. But like I said, there was really no urgency or pressure or want or desire to teach me how to be a functioning human being. Was my mom a hoarder? No, um, I don't think so. But she's definitely mentally ill and disorganized. So here's where it gets fun because my memory, it was just like unlocked and, and I've just been flooded with all of these different flashbacks and, and thoughts. So Back in the day, my mom had a business in downtown Oakland, and she had a mezzanine suite that I remember visiting often. And uh, I, I'd say from the ages of 9 to 12-ish, I actually would go into my mom's office and get paid to help her organize her files. I'd walk in, and there was just paper everywhere. It was all over the desk, all over the floor. And she would just be in a complete frenzy because she had a client coming in or because someone important was coming in. And, you know, God forbid they see her office like that. So um, she she actually showed me how to uh, file alphabetically and, and told me how she wanted her files done. And I would just spend all day with papers all over the floor trying to help her get organized. And, and I remember doing a pretty darn good job. And she was always in a frenzy in the beginning of the day. And she was so appreciative at the end of the day when everything was neatly filed away. And yeah, I was just really proud of myself. You know, all I ever wanted to do was make her happy. I just never could. So just um, just before my 13th birthday, my mom claimed I was just too difficult to handle. I mean, I was just a normal teenager. I I honestly wasn't that bad. And she made me a ward of the court, which means you're basically, you know, the state is your parent. So um, Alameda County, love you guys, uh, sent me to go live at a group home in the ghetto in East Oakland. Love you guys. Um, and, and collectors, I actually have a video on YouTube, this is just a side note, that shows me going back to my group home and speaking about it. I've actually been able to bring so many donations over there, and I've really been able to pay them back for being so great to me. On my YouTube video, it shows how tiny my little room and my closet was. You, should, you guys should really check it out. Anyway... This is, it's called Fred Finch Youth Center. It's in Oakland. And that's basically where I learned my organizational skills. Uh, you had to have your bed made. You had to clean your room. And you were expected to keep everything tidy. You were expected to take a shower every day. You are expected to brush your teeth twice a day. And people there were telling you to. They were making sure you did. They were checking if you really did it. And I really enjoyed being cared of, taken care of. And I, I enjoyed the responsibility of keeping my little space clean and keeping my room clean. And, and I enjoyed the idea of taking showers and, and being clean and being organized. After leaving the group home, being orderly stayed with me. It just felt safe. You know, I had learned all these skills and felt proud of myself. So it started to feel really comfortable. I really enjoyed the stability of being organized versus living in a chaotic home. 
And since then, I've organized every boyfriend's closet, most of my friends' closet, uh, helped several family members clean up their places, and, and I really loved being known as someone who was organized. Fast forward. I'm 27. I'm pregnant. I'm super organized, and this is when the hoarder show came out. I was so hooked on the hoarder show. Oh my gosh. And the Amandas. I know, I know some of you may or may not remember them, but I, I just thought they were great. And there were a lot of organizing and kind of do it yourself remodel shows on that had just hit cable TV. And I was just so fascinated with all of these home shows. So I was actually on bed rest when I decided that I might want to be a professional organizer. I was just wait, watching way too much TV. And the second that I heard you could be a professional organizer and get paid well, I was in. I started out by signing up with NAPO. And that's how I started my journey as an organizer. That's the National Association of Professional Organizers. And initially, I had imagined myself as a high-end organizer wearing heels and living at the container store. And I actually thought maybe, perhaps, I could be handy and install shelves with my hot pink drill. Okay, I'm going to be really honest. I am not mechanically inclined. I'm the way opposite. And my back hurts when I wear heels now. You know, I'm not as young as I used to be. But, you know, I was still gung-ho about organizing. So at that time, um, I had just started a very nasty divorce. It was costly. And I was starting a new business. And so I was scared. But I decided I'd go all in. And I gave myself the benefit of the doubt. And I started collector care. So, I'm, you know, I was just trying to get my business started, and I started out by doing a lot of organizing for friends and family, just small gigs and stuff. I, I didn't really feel like I had found my niche, though. I knew I didn't like installing shelves after I had ruined someone's wall. So, I mean, you really have to know what you're doing when you're installing shelves. I got it. Then one day, I got a lead from the NAPO website. It was my first lead from the website. I was so stoked. And it was going to be an organizing job in a nearby city. I showed up, and I had no idea what I was walking into. Boy, was it cluttered and hoarded, to be exact. At first, I was a bit intimidated and definitely expressed that I was new to the business and, and tried to give them an, an out. And, and this wasn't the first cluttered home that I had worked in, but it was definitely my first real hoard and someone who had the attachment to items and hoarding tendencies. Like I said, I was going through a, a vicious divorce, and I needed the work, and she needed the help, so we decided to take each other on. After working with her for almost a year, we got her house into such good shape, you know, from top to bottom, and everything in its place. It was really great. And during that time, I was working with other people, and, and I also decided to get training with the Institute for Challenging Disorganization, which is the ICD. And it's kind of like NAPO, but it's geared towards training uh, professional organizers to work with people that have hoarding tendencies or chronic disorganization, ADHD, working with seniors, things of that sort. So not, not so much folding techniques and how to color code, more so how to professionally work with people that are suffering from different disorders and different disabilities. I really love the ICD. That's uh, the 
Institute for Challenging Disorganization, and their website is challengingdisorganization.org. They've got all sorts of information for collectors. I love their website. They've got some free downloads that can help you understand why you collect. And so I, I was beginning to think after getting some certificates and getting more experience that I would much rather work with people that really, really needed my help instead of showing up in heels and installing a closet, which was my original vision of me as a professional organizer. And I really enjoyed working with this client. I enjoyed her self-proclaimed and, and also diagnosed OCD and ADD. She had a lot of insight and she really helped me understand how she felt and I, I still appreciate how vocal she was. I don't know if she listens to this podcast. By now, she must know who I'm talking about if she does. I know, um, you know, I, I am still in touch with this client. That's how uh, important this relationship was to me professionally. Since then, I've earned many certificates. I've spoken all over the place. And I have a lot of credibility in the field. So that my dear friends, is how it all happened in a nutshell. And I just tried to make a really super long and complicated story short and sweet. Uh, I think my family friend summed it up when she said that I was cute for wanting to help my mom. That's an interesting thought to swallow, and I'm still honestly digesting it. Collectors, if you are listening to this podcast on YouTube, don't forget to show me some love by clicking that thumbs up button. Definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a comment. Don't forget to check out my video on my Rachel's playlist where I visit Fred Finch Youth Center. Until next time, collectors. And remember, happiness is a place between too little and too much. This has been Hoardganized with Rachel CV. New episodes are available every Sunday at 6 p.m. and also on the Collector Care YouTube channel. Download Rachel's Affirmations for Collectors on iTunes or Amazon.com or sign up for Rachel's blog at CollectorCare.com and receive seven tips for clutter-free living. Thanks for listening.